Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 12th of February. Second batch of foreign envoys visits India, Jammu and Kashmir to review situation. Pakistan court convicts UN-designated terrorist Hafiz Saeed in two terror financing cases. And locals in Nepal oppose government's decision to quarantine China evacuees near human settlements. And now for all the details. A fresh batch of 25 foreign envoys to India on Wednesday arrived on a two-day visit to the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir to assess the efforts by the Indian government to bring normalcy in the region. This is the second batch of foreign diplomats to visit Jammu and Kashmir in one month. A fresh batch of foreign envoys from around 25 countries arrived in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday to review the ground situation of the region. This is the second visit by diplomats ever since the Indian government revoked the region's special status, followed by its bifurcation into two union territories in August last year. The group was taken for a boat ride in the iconic Dull Lake upon their arrival amid tight security. The two-day visit, organized by the Indian government, aims to give first-hand experience to the envoys of the efforts being done by the authorities to bring normalcy in the region after reasonable restrictions were imposed. The envoys, accompanied by senior Indian diplomat Vikas Swaroop, later held a meeting with political leaders and civil society members of Jammu and Kashmir. Last month, envoys of 15 countries including US, South Korea, Norway and Maldives had visited Jammu and Kashmir on January 9 and 10 to see first-hand efforts being made by the government in the region. US President Donald Trump has said that he is looking forward to his first visit to India later this month. He indicated that India and the US may sign a trade deal if it was right one. U.S. President Donald Trump has said that he is looking forward to his first visit to India later this month and indicated that the two countries may sign a trade deal. Trump, accompanied by First Lady Melania Trump, is slated to travel to India on February 24 and 25 at the invitation of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The U.S. President will tour Indian capital New Delhi and Ahmedabad in Prime Minister's home province Gujarat where they are to address an event at newly built Motera Stadium on the lines of Howdy Modi in Houston last year. He's a friend of mine, he's a great gentleman, and I look forward to going to India, so we'll be going at the end of the month. Do you plan to sign a trade deal with India? Uh, they want to do something, and we'll see if we can make the right deal, we'll do it. Later, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday took to Twitter saying he was extremely delighted on Trump's India visit. India will accord a memorial welcome to our esteemed guest. This visit is a special one and it will go a long way in further cementing India-USA friendship, Prime Minister Modi tweeted. The two leaders over the years have developed a personal friendship and in 2019, the duo met four times including their joint address before a strong 50,000 crowd of Indian Americans in Houston. Moving on. India's Vice President Venkaiah Naidu on Wednesday met with his Vietnamese counterpart Dang Thi Ngoc Thin in capital New Delhi. Dang, who arrived in India on Tuesday, is on a three-day visit. Both the leaders later held delegation-level talks aimed at bolstering bilateral ties. She also paid floral tribute at National War Memorial and Rajkhat, a memorial dedicated to iconic freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi. The Vietnamese Vice President will also visit Bodh Gaya, a Buddhist pilgrimage site in eastern Bihar province. Vietnam is a close strategic partner in association of Southeast Asian nations and plays an important role in India's Act East policy.
U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in separate phone conversation with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah informed of progress in the U.S. Taliban peace talks on Tuesday. This comes days after U.S. delegation and Taliban representatives held a couple of meetings for negotiations earlier this month. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in separate phone conversations on Tuesday informed Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah of progress in the ongoing U.S. Taliban peace talks. President Ghani in a series of tweets said Pompeo informed him about a notable progress in the Afghan peace process and that the Taliban had made a proposal with regards to bringing a significant and enduring reduction in violence. Ghani, while welcoming the development further added, the government will manage the next steps in the process. Meanwhile, Abdullah also confirmed the development on Twitter and said he hopes the Taliban will also use the opportunity. Afghan government had called on the Taliban to agree to a nationwide ceasefire, a demand also made by the U.S. President Donald Trump in September when he called months-long negotiations dead. The Taliban, however, rejected the demand. In Eastern Pakistan, a Pakistani court on Wednesday convicted UN-designated terrorist Hafiz Saeed in two terror financing cases and sent him to five and a half years in jail. An anti-terrorism court in Pakistan's Lahore city convicted 2008 Mumbai terror attack mastermind Hafiz Saeed in two terror financing cases on Wednesday. He was slapped with a prison sentence of five and a half years and a fine of rupees 15,000 in each case. The sentences of both the cases will run concurrently, local media reports said. Hafiz Saeed was arrested on July 17, 2019 on charges of terror financing. He was indicted on December 11 and is currently lodged at the court Lakhpat Jail in Lahore. Saeed led JUD is believed to be the front organization for the lashkar e taiba responsible for carrying out the 2008 Mumbai terror attack that killed 166 people, including six Americans. His conviction comes as Global Anti-Terror Watchdog Financial Action Task Force is scheduled to meet in Paris between February 16 to 21 to formally announce what it thinks of Pakistan's performance on tackling money laundering and terror financing. Mutahida Qaumi movement founder Altaf Hussain has said no power in the world can end the word muhajir while also warning people of the community that they shouldn't fall under propaganda of those saying he has sold the muhajir name. Muhajir is a community of Urdu-speaking immigrants who left India during 1947 partition and settled in Pakistan. Founder leader of Mutahida Qaumi movement or MQM, Altaf Hussain, has said, No power in the world can end the word Muhajir, and those saying that we have sold the Muhajir name should not fall into the propaganda. This comes a month after Shafi Burfat, the chairman of GA Sindh Mutahida Mehes, announced that Muhajir leader Altaf Hussain will be the head of the Sindhu Desh government, an idea of a separate homeland for Sindhis proposed by Sindhi nationalist parties. While calling Muhajirs and Sindhis to unite for freedom from Pakistani rule, Hussain, who lives in self-exile in London, said that although the identity of the Muhajir is different, but now their homeland is Sindh. In a show of unity, Sindhi nationalist parties and Muhajir political workers last month held joint rallies and raised pro-freedom slogans in Sindh, saying they do not want to live in a terrorist, theocratic and fascist state of Pakistan. Both Sindhis and Muhajirs have for long claimed to have been suffering discrimination and human rights violations at the hands of Pakistani state and its army. At least 15 Rohingyas were killed and dozens went missing after a ship carrying about 130 people capsized in the Bay of Bengal on Tuesday. 
The ship packed with refugees were trying to make their way to Malaysia from camps near Bangladesh's Cox's Bazar town. At least 15 Rohingyas were killed and dozens went missing after a ship carrying about 130 people capsized in the Bay of Bengal on Tuesday. Rescuers had saved 73 people from the vessel which had set sail early on Tuesday packed with refugees trying to make their way to Malaysia from camps near the resort town of Cox's Bazar in Bangladesh. Some of the survivors said a second vessel carrying a similar number of passengers had also set off at the same time. Coast Guards had so far been unable to locate the second vessel. Two Bangladesh naval vessels and two Coast Guard ships were involved in a joint rescue operations near St. Martin's Island of the southeastern tip of Bangladesh. More than 730,000 Rohingya Muslims fled to neighboring Bangladesh in a crackdown by Myanmar's military in 2017. Myanmar had denied UN's accusation that its military waged a campaign against Rohingya with genocidal intent. The Nepal government has announced its plan to quarantine evacuees from coronavirus hit China in Bhaktapur province, drawing protest from the locals. They said the proposed isolation center in Bhaktapur is extremely close to human settlements. Locals in Nepal's Bhaktapur have expressed objection over government's decision to quarantine evacuees in their province after they returned from coronavirus hit China. Bhaktapur residents fear that they would be infected from coronavirus as government's proposed isolation center is extremely close to human settlements in their province. Coronavirus named as COVID-19 by WHO has so far claimed the lives of over 1,000 people in China alone. Meanwhile, elected representative from Bhaktapur, Prem Suval, on Tuesday also expressed disagreements on the government's plan of setting up quarantine in densely populated areas in the country. भक्तपुर खरिपाती स्थित नेपाल विद्युत प्राधिकरण को तालिम भवन में रखने गरी आज अभियान प्रधानमंत्री कार्यालय र स्वास्थ्य मंत्रालय का सचिव ले निरीक्षण गरी को प्रति जनता को विरोध चल तेस्तो क्वारेंटाइन स्थल कोनाबस्ती बीच रखनु हुं दे ना दो नेपालीज गवर्नमेंट इनिशिएटेड द प्रोसेस ऑफ इवैक्यूएशन ऑफ to send aircraft to evacuate them. In the latest, the government has said the preparations are complete. Authorities have started a program for the youth in India, Shumwa and Kashmir, which will train them in practical ornithology in order to promote bird watching as a nature-based tourism in the region. India's northern Jammu and Kashmir regions, mountains, lakes and river sites form a natural habitat for various rare bird species. To promote bird watching as a nature-based tourism in the region, authorities in Srinagar city on Tuesday started a program to train as many as 18 local youth in practical ornithology. The trainees at Dachikam National Park are being taught about bird identification, basics about ornithology, bird species and their effects on environment during the training. So ये चीज कश्मीरियों में बहुत lacking है bird watching की तरफ एक वो जज्बा या passion तो वो एक हिसाब से हम youngsters को inculcate करने के लिए ये पहला objective उसका ये है second objective ये भी है कि nature based tourism को हम promote करें तो इसमें हमें birds के बारे में bird identification basics about ornithology birds को कैसे पहचानना है कौन कौन सी species है और उनका क्या effect है हमारे environment पे हमारे माहौल पे तो वो सब कुछ सीखने को मिल रहा है Located around 13 miles east of Srinagar, Dachikam National Park is a protected area under the care of the Indian government. It is known for its sporting of musk deer and several rare birds. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.